Hallo, hallo. Dies ist ein neuester Mission von Maui. Es basiert auf den Perch-Filmen. Auf diesen freue ich mich äh, schon sehr. And here we go. That is to say, in English, um, this is the newest mission from Maui. And he's proved to be quite the revelation in mission creation. It's kind of based on the Purge films. That's me getting up. And, uh, hmm. I've been kind of looking forward to this one. Now, what you need to do is stay alive until 7 a.m. Apparently, American soldiers are friendly. Hmm. Right, let's see what's going on. Can we move yet? Oh nope. Oh dear. That all got a bit walking dead, didn't it? Wrinkles. Area clear, clear, clear. Area clear. Five hours later. That's class four. Lower been authorized for using purge. Ho 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 ho. Okay, excellent start. Do I have anything? No, and I'm dying. Great. I'm guessing these fellas don't have anything. But these guys might. Oh, well, yes, I'll have that. I'll have everything we've got. Hoping, yes, it's first aid kit in here. Yes. Okay, we heard that, didn't we? Stop 
flashing on that building. Oh, that was a lot closer. This gun's got a light. Idiot me. Eh. Charles in well, 
20 years. Charles, if you happen to see this video, and you might, get in touch, mate. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out how to do that either way. Oh, am I in the right building? Yeah, leave me a comment here, or send me an email. You can figure that out, I am sure. find Charles a long time. Do you still use mono? He will know what that means. Righty, so... What was the story with Charles? Well, we met at university. College, whatever you like to call it. first day. And Charles at the time, he was absolutely on his own. His father departed years earlier, I think, and his mother had gone as well. tell you that it's impossible to make money through them. And say, well, it is and it isn't. Um, it's impossible if you're in late on. It's very possible if you're in early on. People are getting first. They're the ones who get paid. And Charles, he knew quite a few of the people who ran various ones and um, he had the opportunity to be in there earlier than your average punter. So it was a chance of making out. Uh, but the thing about Charles was he was fantastic at learning stuff. Uh, he was very quick at learning. And he was a voracious reader when something had his interest. course. Uh, if it was multiplayer, that would be great, but only if you had a high number of players. Uh, if people weren't idiots. Yeah, that's the thing I'm interested in. That sounds like a GAU type got a go. Kind of mini gun stroke cannon that you have mounted on like an E10 or something like that. I mean, Charles was a fellow with uh, a lot of diverse interests. Um, he's into 
interest in all kinds of spirituality. Uh, he was interested in alternative therapies. It was thanks to Charles that I got involved in Reiki to a certain extent. In fact, I am, I am a qualified Reiki master. In case you think that means that uh, I'm interested in these things or that I'm involved in these things, I hate to disappoint you. I am a certified Reiki master and become part in the story. Now, uh, Charles was into Reiki uh, and he was into, well, a lot of things. Uh, uh, Buddhism. And coincidentally, uh, I first met my Buddhist friends uh, when I was living with Charles. Because of Charles, but because they knocked on the door one night. That's the story for another time, I guess. As I've told already. Okay, I think that mask is causing things to glitch into my field of view, but eh. just being introduced to the UK. And Ricky well, Ricky's slightly odd. Uh, it comes from a Zen Buddhist background. It's a Zen Buddhist monk who first developed it, I believe. Oh. I hear 
right, friends. See the light over there. Yeah, I didn't even know it's over too. Let's just chill out here, please. to Ricky and he got his Ricky level 1 his Ricky level 2 and became a Ricky master but thanks to the trouble with this Phyllis Furumoto woman it was a bit awkward for anyone trying to practice Ricky at the time uh, she had filed a trademark registration uh, for the term Ricky I thought that was fast firing weapon. And um Charles asked me, you know, how do you invalidate a trademark registration or contest it? find out. And this was really prior to the internet, so if you wanted to know stuff, you had to read books. And I remember going up a uh, law library with Charles, and just devouring books, just oof, pouring through them. I discovered one of the best ways of contesting a trademark claim was to show that the word was in common use. Well, how best could one do that? By showing that it was in the dictionary. At the time, Ricky wasn't in the dictionary. So the next thing on our list was how do you add a word to the dictionary? Ah, 
And, um, well, cut that story short. We did. The thing about this was, I, I'm not a believer. Yeah, I saw that guy running across there. Did you? I think we're going back to the roof. Yeah, at no point during any of the testing was I asked whether I believed in it or not. Ricky is a system of moving, well, detecting and moving energy around the body. Effectively, it regards illness as being caused by trapped or misdirected energy flows. And so you detect the energy fields coming from someone's body, and you actually do it by not touching them, just moving your hands close, and swirling this energy around. Now, I can't detect any energy flows around bodies. still able to pass my Ricky level 1, my Ricky level 2, and my Ricky master certification. Mm. It's not seven years of medical school, is it? thing was just symptomatic of the kind of adventures I had with Charles. Something would happen, and then a whole bunch of stuff would result from it. Thank gosh, uh, Charles was quite interested in a certain legal status that one can obtain is that of a perpetual traveller. Uh, it's an enormously difficult thing to achieve, uh, but basically it allows you to uh, behave as though you are stateless. You are not a citizen of any country. I might see red lights through there. or anything like that. Uh, you have no diplomatic anything. You can potentially avoid an awful lot of taxes. Uh, but you can't really stay anywhere. You've got to be moving around a lot. Uh, it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to 
have happened. Uh, but, you know, we discovered uh, the fun of cover passports. Uh, false or invalid passports. Quick, quick. That one can use to conceal nationality. So, when you hear about things like these micronations, like, say, Sealand, uh, issuing passports. Are they legal passports? Well, any passports tend to be legal if it's accepted. Uh, that's a nasty big gun. Yeah, if you can get a passport from a micronation of dubious legality like Sealand, you can potentially use it. A passport is valid if it is accepted. It, it's surprising how little international law there is concerning passports. And, you know, often the point in having. Oh! Start that. Try again. Let's see. Um, passports from these kind of places are useful as cover passports because maybe you want to conceal your true identity or your true nationality. And you might wonder why you would ever want to do this. Well, consider if you are, say, an Israeli citizen uh, traveling through Arab countries. extra weight. Ah, I'm not sure I want the mask either, actually. Right. Oh yes, treat myself.
Reload quickly, please. stuff on the ground. in North Korea, your passport will be taken from you. You usually have to deposit it at the desk in the hotel. And I wanted to have a second passport. Just in case I needed to leave there in a hurry. I have the passport upon me. Actually, that wasn't such an unwise precaution. Oh yes, it's ravaged so good things. Um, at the time when I arrived, uh, Kim Jong-il uh, was the leader. He did not like flying. He preferred to travel everywhere by train if he could. And he'd just been off for a secret visit to China. Oh, ho, ho. And upon his return, when passing through a train station, there had been an explosion. It was feared that it was an assassination attempt. This was right as I was arriving. So, not great. Okay. Mm. Oh, I 
Bizim şey gönü. There's someone there. There's a few people there. Don't uh, think. Get going. Get going. Sorry. Computers, you know, all my friends uh, were into computers, and uh, this was not uh, an necessarily easy time uh, to do that. Although it was quite a fun time because there was an enormous difference in price between buying a complete computer from a shop or building one yourself. These days, there's no difference, but sometimes it's more expensive to build one yourself. Uh, but back then, uh, it was twice the price to by a completely machine, I saw that tracer far. Seven, you know, you buy five hundred. You buy fairly round amounts, and that tends to leave you with some overstock. Overstock, and what do you do with these? 
Unfortunately, the terms of the contract does not permit you to resell them. to whatever. Uh, I came across a guy recently who was selling off a pile of hard drives on eBay. Generally you don't ever want to buy a second hand hard drive because you have no idea what's happened to it. Uh, but in his case, the company that he worked for had bought up these machines, uh, but the hard drive was smaller than the one uh, they wanted. So his job had been to tear out all these hard drives and replace them with larger ones. The company didn't care what happened to the ones he was pulling out, so he was sneakily selling them off as a GKB bonus. chips were the processors of choice. Uh, Pentiums didn't exist yet. They were coming. Uh, 486 chips. Oh, the fun of those. Um, he's with them. Uh, 486 chips came in SX and DX uh, varieties. Uh, the SX was a uh, 25 megahertz chip, I think. It's a long time ago, I may be wrong on some of this. was a 33 megahertz chip. Uh, there were other differences too. It's just clock speed. Oh, uh, new. And the oh, And you, for sure. And then come back. Okay. 
that, um... Oh, jeez. Yeah, we saw that, didn't we? and he turned to follow. Processors and motherboards ran at the same clock speed. So, if you had a 33 megahertz processor, your motherboard ran at 33 megahertz as well. And processors at the time didn't have heat sinks. jump cut there because there was a police car going past my window. story. Uh, Charles found someone who had a bunch of 486 DX chips on the go, and they weren't just any old DX chips. There were also, at the time, DX266 chips. They had a uh, clock doubling, and uh, so they ran at 66 megahertz. Huge, huge upgrade to a uh, processor. Doubling your processor power. Uh, megahertz clock speed was king back then. Uh, 66 megahertz 486 was faster and more powerful than the 33 megahertz one. And the ones that Charles were looking at were IBM Blue Lightning ones. These were T 
GX 4 100s ran 100 megahertz. When you consider that the standard only ran at 33, point. And this guy had a whole bunch of grey market overstocks on them. In fact, I think he actually worked for IBM. So Charles came to me one day and said, um, Would you fancy going to a meeting? I said, Really? With him? As what? That should be the IDAP base, which I presume is the American base. Chuff. There was a task. And we lost. <laughs> Say hello. Come on. There you go. And 
So anyway, yeah, Charles needs to go missing with this guy, uh, but Charles was a ripped jeans and uh, tie-dye t-shirts kind of guy. And he, he looked young. Uh, whereas, coming from the background that I did, I looked convincing in a suit. So, <laughs> that's what we did. Ah, I heard that. Ah, oh, jeez, it's going right there. Leave. Leave at speed. Oh, I've forgotten where I was in my channel story. Um, oh, there's an element. The uh, point is, Charles needed to go to a meeting to try and buy some uh, processors that were at the very least grey market and he had to look like the kind of guy who's used to doing these kind of deals and the kind of guy who had the money to do these kind of deals because he certainly didn't and was wanting to do this for no cash down paying from the sales as it were mm. so yeah we turned up uh, I was suited and booted, and Charles and my intern or protégé or whatever, which was quite fun because I had no idea what was going on. And uh, Charles was sitting there pretending to take notes, whereas he was actually the guy conducting everything. And that's where we're going. Okay. I oh, know, let's go right through the middle. Why not? Oh, vehicle coming. I think it's got a turret. Turn corner. Get up this hill. Ah, quick. Right line of sight. Go, go, go. Yikes. Charles got his processors. Uh, another thing that he did is he used to run premium rate telephone lines. Which I mean, it was, um, these were telephone numbers that you could call that charged something like 50 pence a minute. You know, some large amount of money. And the things that he was doing was horoscopes. I wasn't involved in this at all. You know, Charles always had stuff on the go. That's people bad. telephone lines and stuff. There's a few things you need. Yeah, first thing is you need a telecoms provider. You need a telecoms company that will let you do this. There are a few of them. Uh, so Charles took a taxi.
tabloid newspaper into giving him a hop of adverts without him paying any cash up front in advertising space. And he never paid the bill. That's five of these guys. Oh, I see what back outside. Not worried about the front guys, I'm worried about the back guys. newspaper giving him advertising space for his print and rate horoscope phone lines, which he never paid for. I doubt he paid the telecoms company either. Charles was fabulous at not paying bills. I made cash off this and bear in mind that you know at the time we we're at college. You know, this this is an impressive uh, series of achievements uh, for someone of Charles's age. You know, he was only like 18 at the time. Blimey. Now, I lost touch with Charles. And the reason I did is, uh, a little sad, I don't know whether to tell you or not. Um, it's nothing bad. Spain for drug smuggling. Uh, even that's not what it seems. Uh, he was really uh, supposed to go through for well, it's a series of rather seasoned importers, shall we say. And they always sent through uh, a guy on the route on their own before going through with the main load. And Charles was to be a guy on his own, just a small amount with him. Uh, but he got caught and ends up in prison for it. Uh, in Spain, not great. Another noisy motorbike. Now, I mean, obviously, Charles a friend. sure that uh, Charles had a proper lawyer, uh, access to consular services, all that kind of thing. Ah, uh, jinkies. I'm doing... Yikes. and sent it to him. Strange thing to do. Uh, I found it on my hard drive recently. So it's still got uh, the original files. Uh, now when, when Charles got out of prison, and he was okay, he, he wasn't even there for long, uh, I arranged to meet him. That's something that really pained me. Uh, when Charles actually got jailed, you know, he became an object of gossip. Oh, it's the airfield. 
That was like scared me for a second going cross country. Uh, yes, yeah, this, this really annoyed me when when Charles was imprisoned. Suddenly, everyone had an opinion about Charles, and most of them were negative. I found it astonishing because most of them didn't really know him and who he was. And this was virtue signalling in the old days, really. People wanted to impress upon others that they would never do such a thing. See that guy? Uh, uh, first person who isn't helping. So we're going to. still are, uh, were a street in London called Horse Free Road. There's a couple of things about Horse Free Road. Uh, it has a famous magistrate's court. And I remember when the Bosnian conflict was on the go, it was also where the uh, recruiting office for the Kosovo Liberation Army was. I remember walking past that at the time and It's also where Channel 4 is, in the big custom building. And the thing about Channel 4's building that probably stands out the most is when these horrible glass and steel things. Well, the whole of the ground floor is glassed in, and it's almost entirely taken up by the sort of cafe, restaurant, bistro thing that they've got. And um, I had clued in the camera crew. Working as to what was going on, and I had them all sitting down in the sort of restaurant bit. Now, I had given Charles an address to meet me at. GPS and things back then, people don't even have electronic maps. You know, people are relying on their A to Z of London paper book. You see Charles walking along, and you see him look at the address, and you see him look at the A to Z, and he realises that, yeah, the address in Horse Free Road I've given him is Channel 4, why haven't I mentioned it? And as he uh, approached the front door, I had the camera crew ambush him and uh, the presenter shove a microphone in his face and say, Charles, blah, 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 blah. I understand you've just been released from a Spanish prison on drug smuggling charges. He's like, oh, what? Oh. Charles is a pretty cool guy at best of times, but this was an absolute surprise. He didn't expect this. 
Uh, I let him float for a bit, and then I stepped out. Hey, hey, look, mate. Get up to their fence line at uh, speed. And that, I'm sad to say, was the last time I saw Charles. Sadly, that was the last time I ever saw Charles. Uh, I did keep track of him for a while. It wasn't easy, because there's a guy who knows how to disappear. I'm just making the dealers are over there. years ago. So Charles, if you're watching this, get in touch mate. Really miss you. Uh, when we were having adventures in the film industry, oh, I so wish that Charles had been around uh, because he would have been good at that. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. You know, I think I'm basically okay for supplies. I don't really... really want to buy or sell anything. Um, so what happens? Can I sell my gun? No, not really. Okay, let's see about getting our kit swapped over. heavy. Oh, this is 
guessing might have crew. That might make things difficult. Is there a wall out this end of the base? Yeah, yeah, but lots of gaps. Right, let's see if I'm nicking it. fastest thing in the world. By golly, it's pretty safe. I think I might have to send maybe a message to... to I probably should lock these. Okay. Nice. I like the underglow from the chem light. This is fun. So it's another video where I have been whispering so people don't hear me. Yeah. It's it's hard not to do. Whoops. Oh no. Ah, an active wheel. This thing's pulling to the side now. I'm an idiot. Oh, cool. Well, the AI doesn't at all mind coming along for the ride. Good shit, Tex. Um. I am carrying a toolbox. I'm not carrying a tire, however. But...
sorry about the delay, Charlie Robertson. That's, yeah, right, we're still a bit iffy on the wheels. Ah, oh, I thought for a Trouble, you say? Good Charlie Robertson. Charlie? Get him, Charlie. Get him. That's right. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. There are people who can hurt us. There's another wheel. Not worried about one of the wheels being red, but everything's fine. Can you feel the petrol stations? Oh, apparently not. Oh no, Charlie got out. Oh, my wheels fell off. Nuts. Four of my wheels fell off. Charlie Robinson ran right away. Oh, no. Hey, Charlie. What I have to do? Sorry, mate. I just want your things. Now, if you weren't going to be in my gang no more. Plastic, where am I going to get some tires from? Get to fix that. Oh, we can barely move. I don't have Charlie Robertson anymore.
Oh, I wouldn't, man. Jeez. Oh, turns out we've got ahead. The bus. It's gonna have wheels. Turn out. How's that turn out? Is it oh, everything up? Oh my goodness me, this thing barely moves now. I don't even know what shot us. But if I can get to this bus, maybe I can get enough wheels. I don't know how many uses this toolkit has. And finding another one. Not gonna be easy. Right, close enough. Just uh how do we fire the smoke grenade? Smoke screen, there it is. Oops, that was G. Yeah. Can't remember how. Oh, no, it's R, isn't it? No. No, it's not. Just in time. Now, who wants a word with me? Alright, nobody wants a word with me. Oh man, don't. Good. Pretty good, there you go. Has any one of you guys got a toolkit? Asking for a friend. Oh, how dare you. Two more 
Bibles. I'm not sure. Where is that coming from? Right, right front wheel. Serves me right, my hubris just ended me. I would love to know what shot at us. Ah, anyway, here we go. This is the Purge on Altus. It is by Mary. It is very good indeed. If you want something you can just pick up and play, this is great. Doesn't matter if uh, you know you want it for ravagey reasons or to play this as a more general Arma 3 mission. Uh, because it's great. It reminds me very much of Escape from Chernery back on uh, Arma 2, Operation Arrowhead. Lovely. Thoroughly enjoyed. Um, definitely a new favourite, I think. Well, until next time, I shall bid you good day. And if you happen to be Charles... Charles Francis Chernery... Yeah. Um, CFSI. Oh, and Charles, if it happens to be you... I have met Martina uh, since I last saw you. Uh, be sure and give me a shout. Anyway, until next time, ta -ra.